Say hello to Chimp, a robot designed for disaster response, to go to places where no human could go. It may look a little slow, a little clunky, but it packs enough artificial intelligence to work with little human help. It's the brainchild of NREC, the National Robotics Engineering Center in Pittsburgh, part of the pioneering Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. This is the first port of call for the US government, military and corporations wanting help with robotics. We have um, unique expertise and unique technology that uh, makes it uh, almost d very difficult or almost impossible for most companies to tackle these problems in-house. So they try and, and when they don't succeed or they don't see they have the expertise, that's when they come and see NREC. That expertise runs deep. Martial Hébert has been making computers and robots see for more than 30 years. He says conditions at this small, private American university were just right to nurture this work. In 1979, this was a little bit of a crazy idea, right, to create an institute completely from scratch uh, here at, at, at CMU. Uh, but this environment is really a place where you can do those kind of things. The School of Computer Science has the very first uh, machine learning department in the world, uh, one of the first uh, human-computer interaction uh, department, and so forth. So there's a lot of first here, OK? The Institute's work covers the entire breadth of the field, from developing wheels for NASA's next Mars rover lander to sensors for monitoring production lines in China, giving factories their own artificial intelligence. All of a sudden, 10 people rush over to an area and we realize that part of the manufacturing process is having a problem because of the people. The people know that there's a problem, but this is a way for the system as an environment to understand what's happening in its own space. The Institute's success is seen as an emblem of Pittsburgh's own revival after the collapse of its steel industry in the 1980s. Is this a case of robotics to the rescue? Not so fast, the skeptics say. Robotics heralds a wave of automation that could be an epic job killer. Even the simple business of driving isn't safe. Back at NREC itself, they insist robotics is about helping humans, not replacing them. But in the longer run, who knows? We're many, many years away before robots can actually replace humans, right? That will take uh, decades before we can see that. And what of the even darker fear about robots? That the descendants of chimp could one day grow so intelligent, so powerful, that they pose a threat not just to jobs, but to human life. The problem is not that robotics, that the system is dangerous because it is designed to be dangerous. The problem is how to put it together in a, in a, a system that can be uh, verified, that can be validated, that can be uh, trusted. So for example, how do you test and validate a system that is based on learning and adapting from data? If a robot can learn, it can change. Right now, though, the robot butler, Herb, sticks to very simple tasks. I am putting the blue block in the blue bin. Herb will eventually be able to help you clean up your table or prepare a meal in the kitchen. And all of this involves finding objects in the world, identifying what they are, picking them up, and moving them to new locations. It sounds mundane, but Herb's long-term impact could be anything but. These are still early days in Pittsburgh's robotics revolution. Noops, I missed.